watched my, if you've watched my videos, I, you know I'm in a dearth, and so I wanted to show an example of just how bad my dearth is. It's not just affecting uh, my nukes, which have to be fed, and I'm not a big fan of feeding, but after the work I did this spring was building queens, unless I want my all of them to fly away, I've had a few abscons, you have to feed. But here is another example. This hive went through winter with this medium here as a full 10 frames of honey. And I didn't even have to do anything because she also had built this whole thing was a shim full of honey and they built extra. So you can see there's still honey there. Well, I've just taken all of these pieces off like this because she's eating them. And so I thought, okay, well, she's eating what's up top. But no, I pulled these frames and these frames are completely empty. This whole medium, I could not lift by myself at all. And now I can lift it with one hand, at least tip it, which I would never be able to have done. She's eaten. I, I, I'm not going to cut it all off just yet, but I imagine she has maybe two to three frames of honey under there, besides what's up top, because she's actually eaten now the top part. She went through and came through winter with ten frames of honey. She did not touch her honey. And now she's tearing through it as though I've just come out of a hard winter and they just started rebuilding. And this is just keeping them going. Because every other hive I have is dry. The larva is dry. The frames are dry. If I put a frame in within three days, that's gone. Jeez. This hive seems to have Still a drone population they're letting drones in they can't get up into that honey up top though so at least that's safe for just whoever they want to feed and uh, if I get a popcorn bloom my popcorn is my main flow I actually did some research on my notes and the blooms that I had everything bloomed in February everything and it's supposed to be blooming in March, February through March. And that's not what happened. It all bloomed in February. Then I had a freeze. So anything that was left to bloom through to March froze back. And then my main flow, which is the popcorn trees, the, half of them got stunted or froze all the way back. So I have some racemes growing. And so if I get a bloom, it may be on time or it may be postponed and then the other half that got froze back I really don't know that it's going to boom yikes so part of being a beekeeper is you know noting your blooms and this is a good learning experience my notes I write everything down in a book and I try to note what's blooming, the rain, the shine, the temperatures, things like that. And but another really good resource is my camera because I love taking pictures of the blooms. And so I actually could go back and look through previous years. If I couldn't find a note in a book, I look through my camera and maybe just make yourself a book of blooms. You know, it's something to do. Everything bloomed earlier, and what I did some research, uh, a lot of the climate scientists are saying, yeah, this is, this is what's happening. Since I think the earliest I found was 2013, probably earlier, I just didn't do the more research. Google is your friend. And uh, things are going to start changing, and I have to start watching what's going on more, even more so. Learning lesson, be a better beekeeper, write down your blooms, roll with it, and if you're going to feed, 
this is the best time to feed because you just don't want to lose your crop, your bees. And uh, no, I'm not afraid of feeding because, oh, I might get a honey crop. Because really, right now, this is sustaining. This is just sustaining. It's as if I'm in winter. And there you go. A little bit of what's happening in the apiary. Happy beekeeping.